Hello everyone, welcome to the session. Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, all right. So, is it possible to share? Okay, so the link for YouTube is also shared, right? So you can watch it later on this link. So it will be available here. The session will be available here. All right. So, uh, okay. How how are you going along with week three? Any comments? Lab assignment. Sorry, lab assignment. It's quite. Uh... Out of league. I'm uh, sorry, um, Mohammed. I'm not able to hear you. Sir, hello. hello. Yeah. Sir, sir, lab assignments is quite uh, out of league. Okay. Why is that? Uh, many new things we have learned in week three, like Jinja to hmm. and things, and I guess uh, we have to use Mat Plot Live also in. Uh, this, uh, yeah uh, yes yes yeah i mean so uh, see the thing is the lab assignment is uh, somewhere testing your python skills also and uh, to some extent what we have learned in uh, uh, what we'll be learning in this uh, complete week right and uh, uh, so i mean once you get the essence of what basically uh, templating is uh, it becomes uh, easy to some extent all right. Yeah. I mean, there will be some uh, places where you will find uh, difficulty, but that is where we come in, right? So you can uh, clear your doubts there. We won't be able to uh, directly give you the code of uh, how to do it, but yeah, we'll help you with certain things. Thank okay. You. So uh, yeah. So I would uh, I would uh, what we call suggest everybody to go through the question statement quite uh, uh, thoroughly because. Uh, uh, that will help you to get good marks and you will not deviate from uh, the, the lesser you deviate from question statement uh, the chance of getting uh, good marks is higher right the question statement every point in statement is defined in a way uh, and that is built up on uh, the experience that we had from the previous term right so it is defined in a way that uh, students that have who have you know had confusions initially were taken care of that with the help of those points so just read the points uh, carefully and then you will be able to do it right at least uh, start uh okay so beginner for what so beginner is not i mean this term is very generic right beginner for what beginner for programming python or web dev web dev okay so okay but i mean the, the assignments get tougher only when there is addition of python component right Otherwise, uh, what we are giving as a content is uh, uh, already, I mean, is is what uh, the lab assignment have, right? So the, it is very strictly connected with the content. So also, I think we had raised this in the discourse also. It will be helpful if we know where we are losing the marks because the test evaluation shows 100 on 100. But eventually when we get the marks, we seem to lose uh, quite a few uh, we are not sure where we are going wrong and why this is kind of uh, happening. Uh, it will be really helpful, sir, if we can get some feedback. I know uh, that we will get the feedback, but uh, uh, if we can implement those changes before the other uh, lab assignments, it will be great. Sir. Yeah, right. So, I mean, uh, what we have uh, also done in the upcoming lab assignment is uh, you will get uh, the number of test case or the private test case passing out of total cases. Right. Okay. So even if you get a hundred in uh, public test evaluation, what happens is it will give you the number of private test cases passing out of the total private test cases. So you know that okay, if let's say ten out of ten passes, so later on when it, when the final evaluation happens, then also it will be hundred. Or if nine out of ten passes, then it will it be will... from week three, sir. Yeah, we are trying to do it with week three, but uh, definitely in the later weeks, which you know are more uh, ambiguous to understand, uh, you will have that feedback. Because week three doesn't have that; it's still showing the public cases only. Right, right. I, I, uh, I know that. I'll be, uh, we'll, we'll be trying to incorporate from week three itself. But uh, let's see. Uh, I, I just something. have one, one question on the lab. If it is uh, the right time to ask, otherwise mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So uh, this uh, code, what I'm doing is uh, when it generates the uh, histogram, mm -hmm. it's also throwing an output in the folder. 
because how, what I'm doing it, I'm just uh, taking, throwing an output and taking from there into onto the rendering it onto the HTML file. So is that okay? Uh, yeah, but you just have to make sure that the the plot does not get plotted on the screen because matplotlib another I mean it uses another. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. That that it won't. Yeah, that, that won't. Is the process. I mean that is what uh, I mean basically you have to do. Okay. 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 So, so I, uh, I just thought because it was outputting another uh, uh, plot on the folder, from mm -hmm. where I'm taking it, I'm picking it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's right. say uh, I want to render some image uh, on HTML. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm doing that, that only. Yeah. So yeah. that image has to exist in your local uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. working directory, right? And then there is no uh, this thing given for the histogram. So I'll take bins as default. Is that okay? The number of bins. Uh, the number of bin bins meaning. So the histogram uh, generally you can specify the number of bins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in this, it's just given to make a histogram. So I've just put uh, without any the default histogram. I'm not uh, specified any. Right, right, yeah. So default is uh, what we expect. Okay. You don't have to go into much details of visualization. Uh, okay. A basic histogram would do. I mean, the one that is that comes with a basic uh, command. That is that is what is required. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, that is about uh, lab assignment. Uh, so, I mean, as you go ahead and you get, uh, you know, acquainted with what week three is trying to, you know, give information or what week three is trying to teach you, you should be able to uh, take it and then uh, link it with what we are trying to do, right? So, uh, basically, I mean, directly when I see templates and Jinja, uh, I become uh, a bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is, I mean, I face some difficulties in understanding, but uh, as we go ahead, uh, it will get more clear, right? So when you see the applications of it, at this point, the basic objective should be to understand how uh, Jinja2 is working, right? Then we will implement it in, uh, uh, I mean, we'll use it uh, uh, later to, with the help of backend to actually fill the data, right? Directly jumping on to backend and then incorporating Jinja will not make sense at this point. So we don't know what controller is, right? And uh, uh, we don't know uh, what database is, where the data is coming from. At this point, we can, uh, the basic thing that we can think about is a simple Python file, right? That's why, and since we want to learn how template is created, we will use uh, Python to understand what template is. Okay, so that is what is being taught in uh, week three. All right, so before moving on to week three, so today's agenda, let me uh, give you an idea on that. So the the major content of uh, today's session would be to give you an idea of what Jinja2 is and uh, uh, with the help of some questions. And we will be also creating a base on the base of those questions, how these questions are uh, actually there and what do they actually try to tell you, right? And why do we, why do we basically need Jinja? So we'll try to create a base of what Jinja is and then we'll uh, try to explain you with the help of examples, okay? Uh, before going on to that, there were some loose ends that I wanted to clear out from the previous sessions. That is, one of, one of those was uh, number systems, right? And there was one question, question number 12 of practice assignment. Uh, many of you had uh, some confusions regarding that. I hope some of you got cleared it with the help of TA uh, if you are if you're joining those sessions. But um, just for the, you know, for the sake of records, I mean, this, this session being available on the, on the YouTube and everybody, and I mean, for everybody to see later, what we'll do is we'll have a quick uh, overview of what that question tells us and uh, a brief understanding of what number system is as far as this course is concerned. So we won't go into much details on number system. Uh, what are the uh, different encodings uh, that are there? The number systems that are there that, that we'll see and how do we convert from each other is what we are going to see in the first part of it. And later, uh, uh, Shivani will take over and uh, give you the understanding of what changes. Okay, so without wasting time, I will just share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Can you see the Jamboard? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, uh, what we have studied in number system, I mean, you may have uh, students from a CS background may have a basic understanding of what number systems are. 
but uh, okay let us uh, take everyone on the same page and try to understand from from very basic because that is what is needed we don't have to go into much details all right so basically we will study uh, four types of number systems okay four types of different number systems one that we very uh, i mean we know and we have been using it in our day to day life is decimal okay so this is the number system that everyone comprehends very easily right what uh, number 1 is or number 2 is so we uh, clearly understands that and we are able to relate it with uh, mathematics directly okay yeah some hands are getting raised one minute hello uh, sir good evening yes sir what is uh, what are we discussing today i have just given uh, the idea yes, of that uh, uh, manan okay so first i'll just give you an idea of what number systems are and then we'll discuss week 3 content okay okay number systems today uh, yeah. Right? yeah yeah oh. uh, so we'll try to understand what a week 3 content is but just because these things were remaining from week 1 and week 2 i'm just trying to finish it off okay all right so the one the first number system is decimal number system the second one is the one we the one that computers understand right binary binary system okay the next one is something that is uh i mean that is there to efficiently encode numbers into uh, uh efficiently encode numbers and also to you know to store them very easily to retrieve them very easily and to convert them very easily that is hexadecimal okay and there is one more that is called as octal so these are the four number systems that we will uh, see and try to understand okay so by default if i if i talk about any number okay any number that i take by default it has uh, something called as base okay and in case of decimal number system it is 10 all right so since this is the the widely used number system the most understandable number system the most relatable number system we don't want to create this confusion and uh, keep on writing base 10 base 10 base 10 every time right so if if i do not give any base it is understood that is it, this is a decimal number okay but if i am representing the same number in any other number system i need to specify what is the number system associated with it or in which number system this particular number is represented right so for example if i write 101 and if i do not give base this is 101 in decimal right but if i give a base it has a different meaning okay so in binary we give the base okay because we want to specify that this 101 is not 101 of decimal, but 101 of binary or 5 of binary. Okay. Similarly, if I have a hexadecimal number, it can be something like this. Okay. And then what you have to do is, since it is a hexadecimal, hex 6 decimal 10. So 1, 6 plus 10, 16. So the base is 16. All right. And what is this D? What is this 6? How do I write this number? I'll just go, to, go into that. Okay, similarly, octal, by the, by the term or by the name octal, you can understand it is something related to 8, right? So, if I write 7, uh, 745 and write base 8, it is a octal number. Okay? So, this is how we represent numbers in different uh, number system. Now, what are, uh, I mean, how do we say that whether a number... Uh, in a number system is valid or not. I mean, if I say something like this, this is not a valid octal number. How do I come to this, that it is valid or not, is something that will Better than 8. Right, right, yeah. So, we'll see that. Okay, so, I mean, this validity is defined by what are the uh, allowed or what are the, uh, what we call, yeah, so let's say allowed numbers in that system. Okay, so if I talk about 2, any number system, you'll start off, uh, I mean, the basic numbers, the counting of those numbers, you'll start off with zero, right? So in the decimal number system, when the total number is 10, we'll start off with zeros and go up to nine, right? Why am I not writing 10? Because it is again a combination of uh, one or more digits within this range only, right? So if I write 10 here, it is nothing but one and zero, okay? So the combination, uh, I mean, these are the distinct uh, numbers which cannot be represented by any other number. 
every other number in that system can be represented as combination of these numbers right so for example if i write any number 243 243 this numbers can be represented individually by the digits allowed in this particular system right that is the reason uh, it is valid okay and you can see that the numbers that are allowed in this system or uh, eligible for making a valid decimal number are 0 to 9. Okay. Similarly, if I go for binary, how many digits do I have? Only 2, right? So I'll start with 0 and 1. That's all. I'll end, end it there. That is the reason in binary we have only 2 bits to or 2 digits to work with. Okay. Any other number in binary uh, will be combination of zeros and 1. And that is what you uh, know. Right. Now I cannot write 2 here. Right. And that is the reason any binary number that involves 2 and greater than 2 will become invalid. Right. So for example, I cannot write 2, 1, 3, base 2. This is an invalid number. Okay. So if I write base, it will have only two numbers starting from 0. Okay. Yeah. Some hands raised. Uh, sorry, uh, sir, to disturb you. Uh, in decimal, I wanted to know the base which you have written is which number? I mean, uh, 10, 10, <clears throat> it's 10. base 10, right? Yes. Is it okay if we don't write a base in decimal? Yeah, that's what system. I said, right? So when we when we know a number, I mean, when we talk about a number in decimal system, I circled it for the uh, for this very reason that I am saying you don't have to keep on writing base 10 every time. Okay, okay. Okay. Sorry, so I for example, that. if I yeah, so for example, if I write any number 512 and I do not give base, by default it is understood that it is a decimal number. Okay. So base has to be given for these three number systems explicitly. Decimal, you don't have to. Decimal number. Okay. Right, so 5 and 2 is a valid decimal number. All right. Now, similarly, if I if I talk about octal, the I can the total number of digits that I can have is 8. So it will start from 0 and it, it will end at 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Right? That is the reason it cannot have 8, it cannot have anything above 8. And therefore, this becomes invalid. Okay. So a number, I mean, if you see a number that is uh, having a base, you cannot directly say that it is a you know valid octal number. You just have to see whether these the numbers or the digits that are used to create that number are valid or not. It it lies within the permissible range of numbers provided for that system or not. Okay. With uh, I mean, with that we'll come to hexadecimal. Okay. So hexadecimal numbers uh, start. Hexadecimal, as I said, the base is 16. So the total digits or permissible values or digits will be 16. Right? So what I'll do is, if I if I keep on going, uh, uh, going ahead with 0, I'll see that 0 to 9 is anyway there. Okay? But I cannot call 10, 11, and 12 to be permissible digits for this number, for this system, because see, if you see the digits are again repeating, these are combinations. And what do I say about permissible digits? They are distinct uh, digits. Okay. They cannot be created by combination of any other two or more. Right. So this one zero one one and one two cannot be valid hexadecimal. Uh, I mean, valid meaning uh, they cannot lie in the permissible digits of hexadecimal number. They are valid hexadecimal numbers. No doubt with that. But they are not distinctively made, right? So how do I create or how do I write 10, 11 and so on? Because I need 16 numbers. So I know that these are 10 numbers. How do I make the remaining 6? So for that, I'll use alphabets. All right, small or big, doesn't matter. So it can be this also. Okay, so what the what do these numerically mean? Uh, these mean that this is number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now these are now distinct numbers. So complete range or complete uh, uh, permissible digits of hexadecimal numbers are 0 to 9 as numbers and small or big A, uh, A B C D E F letters. Okay, so these are uh, valid hexadecimal numbers. That is the reason I have written this array 1, D, 6. Okay, so this D comes from this thing. Okay, any doubt till this point? Sir, how to read uh, the hexadecimal number? 1D6. D here stands for which number? Uh, so if you count, it is 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. 13. 
Okay, so maximum, see, if, if uh, I mean, if the number system is X, if you're talking about X system, the maximum possible number that was there numerically will have value of X minus one. That is the reason in decimal we have nine, in binary we have one, in octal we have seven, and in hex we have uh, F, but it numerically means 50. So what is the, what did you say was the difference between the capital and the small? Uh, There's no difference. Uh, Okay, you I mean, can put either. it either in capitals or... Yes, but if you, uh, I mean, the convention has to be same. If you are using small, use small throw. Throw, okay. F is stands for 15. Right? Yeah, F stands for 15. Okay, now you don't have to worry about what does what stand for. We will see the convergence. Because, uh, see, I mean, I might need certain uh, number system or I might need to encode certain things in certain number system as and when required. Right, so we'll see interconvergence of these number systems. I mean, from one number system to the other. Okay, and the most, I mean, most that computers today use are hexadecimal number system. Okay, although they store everything in binary, but to store it efficiently, they need hexadecimal. And why am I saying that? Is I'll come to that in a moment. Okay, so any doubt in this four number systems? And what will be invalid number in? decimal number system what will be invalid number in decimal number system uh, it is 2ea6 this is an invalid decimal number okay right because okay. it has a digit uh, that does not belong to the set 0 to 9 can you repeat the number Right. So E and A are, uh, I mean, other digits that belong to hexadecimal number system, right? So it is out of range of decimal. That is the reason it is invalid decimal, but a valid hexadecimal. Right now? Any issue till this point? No, sir. Okay. Now let uh, us talk. Sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sir, here, uh, uh, what is the A stands for? In a, a, stands, a stands for the, the number 10. Number 10. Right. I mean, you can something like this. Then D will be... 13. Okay. Actually, here you have a 10 arrow point to the B. Na? That's a good thing to uh where exactly oh no no what is this no i mean i did something no no what i was doing was this zero to nine is something that you will have in decimal then you cannot create 10 as a distinct number because then it is again a combination of numbers between zero to nine so how what do you use you use this so instead of these you use this complete set or this mm -hmm. This is what I mean. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Sir. All right. Now let us uh, go to convergence. Okay. So the first one is something. Uh, so we will first uh, see decimal to binary. So the convergence from decimal to binary and binary to decimal are uh, something you need to remember. Otherwise, everything is very easy. I'll show you how. Okay. So do we have to write this? I mean. No, no, you don't have to note this. No, no. no. You don't have to note this because I'll be giving you a printed one. Okay. Okay. Which will be, I mean, completely, uh, I mean, it will have all the text or all the content that I've, I'm giving in the content, uh, this session. Okay. So decimal to binary. For example, if I have a number 56. Okay. I have a number 56. So one simple way of doing that is what you do is first keep on writing the multiples of two or the powers of two. Okay. So what are the powers of two? Uh, two to the power zero, two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power four, two to the power five and so on. Okay. And numerically, what do they mean? This is one, right? Four. Four. Two. Uh, three, I forgot. Two to the power three. Which eight. Is eight, 16 eight, and 32. 32. Now, to make 56, what do I need? I need, I'll start off with adding the larger ones. Okay. 
The next one is 64. So I cannot use that because 56 is less than 64. No. Right? So I'll start off with 32. So 32. Okay. And then let me add 16. What does it make? 48? Yeah. Right? Okay. 48. Still lesser than 56. Let me add 8. What does it make? 56. 56. That's all. Right? So this is something that... Uh, uh, so the total of this will give me 56. And do I need uh, uh, 4, 2, and 1? Zero. Yeah. So do I need these numbers? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Now let me see what are the what is the place value of this. So if this is 5, so I'll just write 1 here. Okay. 1. Okay. So this, uh, let me do that in a different way. So for example, we, we started off with 2 to the power 5, right? So what I'll do, I'll write 5 digits here, or 5 spaces here. Okay. Uh, was 32 required or 32 used? Yes. Right. Was 16 yeah. used? Yes. Okay. Was 8 used? Yes. Okay. So whichever is used, you'll write, uh, uh, I mean, 1 and whichever is not used, you'll write zeros. Okay. So, I mean, 2 to the power 0 to 2 to the power 5, how many did you have? 6 of those combinations, right? Or 6 variations of 2 or 6 different powers of 2. So you will write six places, okay? And you'll start off with the highest one. Highest, now how do we find out this highest? The highest one is the just below power of whatever number we are converting to. Okay, so the binary representation of 56 is this. Okay, and since it is binary, I'll mention it. Go here. Sir, this uh, ones and zeros, how to place it? I mean, you said that whichever numbers are used, you are placing one. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm doing is, uh, uh, okay, let me just write it uh, once again in proper, in a tabular way. Tabular way meaning one below the other. Okay, so let us talk about different powers. So it was 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power uh, 1, 2, okay, then 3, then I have 4, and then 5. Why am I not going beyond this? Because 2 to the power 6 is 64, which is definitely greater than 56, and I will def anyway not need it, right? So I'll use this. So how many numbers are there? 0 to 5, 6 numbers are there. So what I'll do? I'll give 6 spaces. Okay. Now, which one was used? This one is used. This one is used. This one is used. These three are not used. Right. And since this is the largest one, and we have, I mean, the number will have value when we add numbers from most significant bit. Right. So the numbers here are called as most significant bit. And the numbers here are called as least significant bit. Okay. The numbers meaning the last bit is called as most significant bit. And the last bit on the right side is called as least significant. Because, I mean, in the, I mean, if you try to understand it this way, 7, 46, which numbers makes maximum impact? 7, right? And least 6. So that is what I mean by most significant bit and LSB. Okay. And same applies with decimal. Okay. So I use this. So I'll write it one here. I used one here. I used one here. And remaining I did not use. So I'll give three ones and three zeros. That's how you convert. Okay. That is how you convert binary, uh, decimal to binary. Now, if you don't want to use that much brain, okay, when to put what, how many places to give, just divide. Just keep dividing 56 by 2. Okay. Just keep dividing 56 by 2 and keep noting the remainders here. Okay, so if you divide 56 by 2, what is the, what do I get here? 28. What is the remainder if I divide 56? 0. Sorry. Okay, again divide 28. What will I get? Divide 15 by 2. What will I get? 14. What will be the remainder? 0. Zero. Again, divide 14 by uh, 2. I'll get 7. What is the remainder? 0. Zero. 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 Yeah, right. So I got three zeros. Now here, when I divide seven by two, I'll get three, but I'll get one remainder. Okay. Similarly, I'll get two, but I'll get one remainder. Okay. And then again, I get two, sorry. I mean, two, how many is are? One's are. Okay. And then I get one remainder. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, 
so i didn't get the last second last one, one, second, one second. it would be one right so two ones are two i mean this you have to write how many is are right two twenty eights are two fourteen is are two seven is are so two threes are seven but you have one remainder two ones are two but you have one remainder and two zeros are zero and you have one remainder so you have to do it till you get zero here okay. and definitely you will get for every number okay then what you have to do you have to collect it in this fashion Okay, so you see one, 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 zero, zero, zero. Okay, so this is a uh, conversion of fifty-six into binary uh, number. Okay, this is called as uh, DRT, division remainder technique. Okay, and this is what you have to do. So it is, uh, I mean, very similar to division, but you have to keep on uh, dividing by the same number and keep on noting the remainders. Okay, and then collect. This collection is very important; otherwise, your number will become this. Okay, and this is wrong. So collection has to be done from bottom to top. Okay, this is how you convert. Uh, I mean, uh, a decimal to binary. Okay, any issues here? So can we say that it would consume to store the number fifty six? It would consume six bits. No, you cannot say that. At this point, you cannot. So how can we uh, say that whether this number would consume this much amount of bits in the memory? Or in a variable particular. Like See, if there is if there is no information given, then you can say okay, six bits. Okay, but if I say I am saving numbers in bits or byte, what will I do? I'll try to make it eight bits and add two zeros here. Okay, so the number stored is one byte. I mean, the memory taken is one byte. Okay, right. So that is the reason you cannot at this point say. i'll have to specify what is the storage system or i mean how is the number stored whether it is stored in bytes whether it is stored in kilobytes or what is the minimum thing that is required okay so that information has to be given yeah at this point if nothing is given yeah six bits are there six bits are required so during uh, uh, that when i was using uh, ubuntu then yet yeah, when we uh, look at the type of the file like how many blocks it stored it was like 4096 Uh, something like that it is hmm. yeah so 4096 is 4 kilobyte if you take 1024 okay so don't and, and don't, don't don't let us go to this thing for now i'll come to that okay so i let us talk about conversions for now all right so this uh, conversion is clear right conversion from of decimal to uh, binary okay now let us convert a binary to decimal Okay, let us go the other way round. Okay, so I'll start off, uh, start off here itself. Okay, so if I have a binary number, okay, let's take this binary number itself. Okay, so that we can verify also. So I have one 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 zero zero zero, and now now that I know that it is binary, I'm not writing. Okay, so what you have to do is now this is simple, but comparatively this is simple because you might miss something in division, but you'll never miss something there. Okay, so what you have to do is just keep counting the digits from here. Okay, and how do you count? In computers, zero has a lot of significance. So we'll start counting with zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so you have six digits and counted from zero. That is the reason the last one is five, not six. Okay, now. all those whatever numbers you get here you raise the power of 2 with that number and write all the combinations meaning write this 2 raised to power 5 2 raised to power 4 2 raised to power 3 2 raised to power 2 2 raised to power 1 and 2 raised to power 0 okay then what you do is the what is the value of number at fifth uh, power it is 1 so you multiply it by 1 add it similarly what is the value of number when the power was 4 it's 1 so you multiply by 1 add it okay all the numbers have to be added similarly here what is the number 1 and here what is the number 0 okay now if we calculate this we'll get 56 this is how you convert binary to decimal Okay, I'll repeat this. Okay, 
So what we have to do is first start counting from here. So we will go from least significant bit to most significant bit. Okay. And then we'll count the numbers starting from zero. Okay. And then we will keep on doing that till we reach the last point. And then we will raise the powers of two with each numbers and write them with certain spaces. All right. And we'll multiply only those powers of two, which have one in their places and multiply the others with zero. Okay. So for example, I'll take some number that has zero somewhere in between. This is the number. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll similarly, what I'll do, I'll count. So it is zero, one, two, three, and four. So how many powers I'll raise? Four. So it will be two to the power four, two to the power three, two to the power two, two to the power one, and two to the power zero. Okay. Now one. Right, so I'll multiply it by one, then zero. So multiply by zero, then again one. So multiply by one. Okay, then again uh, zero. So multiply by zero, and then again one. So multiply by one. So what do I get? So I get sixteen 20. plus zero plus four plus zero plus. plus one, right? So this comes to 20. Okay. So this is 21 in decimal. You don't have to write 10. Okay. Base 10. So conversion of binary to decimal. This is how we do it. Okay. Any, any issues here? So now that you, yes. you saw both the conversions, right? Conversion from uh, decimal to binary and binary to decimal. If this is, you're clear with this, your conversion and everything is quite uh, okay, right? Because after this, the conversion becomes very easy. All right, so how do we do that? If I want to convert any number in decimal or octal, we will try to see how to do that. Before that, we'll see uh, some something that you, I mean, you can keep uh, in your mind, okay? For example, if I write these numbers, zero, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay, so what are these numbers? Are these hexadecimal numbers or binary numbers or uh, decimal numbers? Okay, so let's say this is decimal numbers because we are starting with zero and after nine, we are not writing A, rather we are writing combination of previous one. This means what is the basic number set that I have? Unique one, zero to nine. Decimal. Yes. Yeah, so let's say we have these numbers, decimal. Okay, if I want to write the, uh, what we call the hexadecimal equivalent of these numbers, what do I write? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, then A, eight, B, eight. C, D, E, and F. F. Okay. Now, if I want to want to write the binary equivalent of these numbers, how do I write? I'll start off with zero. Okay. Then one. Okay. And then we are done. Right. So I need to make combinations of ones and zeros now. So this is two. Okay. This is three. This is four. This is five, this is six, and this is seven. All right, this is seven. So you have to note one thing here. I'll just stop here for a minute. This means that octal number system, if you if you stop here, these digits are exactly the digit of octal number system from zero to seven. Okay. So if you want to, yeah. Somebody speak. Yes. No. So 0 to 7, these are the exact digits of uh, octal number system. And if you see this, if I try to, you know, make it uh, what we call consistent, that is, a, uh, I mean, every every number take all similar bits, same number of bits. So I'll write 0, 0. And you can add any number of zeros on the left hand side, right? Because they do not add anything to the value. So I'm adding zeros here, 0 and 0. Okay. So you can see that all the eight numbers that I have here from 0 to 7, Minimum, they'll take three bits. Minimum. 
okay this means the minimum number of bits required to store an octal number is 3 okay so this is an binary representation of octal 1 this is binary representation of octal 2 similarly this is binary representation of octal 7 okay and since 7 is the maximum or the largest uh, permissible octal digit we will stop at 111 Okay, so this you have to remember that the minimum number of bits required to store an octal number is 3 and it is not less than 3 because you see even this number it is 1 1 but I need to store this 0 to make it octal. Okay, so this is something that you have to uh, keep in mind. Similarly, if I proceed again, so what is the next number that is 1 0 is 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 0. 1011 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 and how many numbers, how many ones are there? Four ones, right? So the minimum number of bits required to store a hexadecimal number is four. Okay, so it is very relative. Okay, once you understand a one number system, it is it becomes understood for other ones. Right, so minimum number of bits required to store octal number three. Minimum number uh, required to store hexadecimal number four. Okay, and you can see that any number, any hexadecimal number, can be represented by four bits, right? By four bits, not less than that. Okay. And what are what about these numbers? I'll I'll, I'll keep on adding zeros. Okay. So then now these become hexadecimal one, hexadecimal two, and so on. Okay. So now this is how you will. Th this is what you will use in conversion of binary into hexadecimal. Okay. Now, what did we use when we wanted to convert a hexadecimal into binary? We kept on dividing it by 2, right? For example, if I want to convert this, let's say 512, and I'm not writing base, this means this is a decimal number. If I want to convert this into hexadecimal, what I'll do? I'll keep on dividing it by 16 with the same rule, and then keep on adding like this. Okay. So this is how you convert a decimal number to any number system. Okay, so I told you about binary. If you want to convert it into hexadecimal, you will see 16. If you want to convert it into octal, you will write here 8 and do the same procedure everywhere. Right, so this is conversion of a decimal number to any other number system. So, right? so where we are dividing the number by its space to convert decimal to any yeah. other number so, system. Yeah, so let's say you want to go from decimal to any number system. Okay, you keep on dividing this number by the base of this number system. Okay, so that is what we are doing. So if I want to convert 5 and 2 into a hexadecimal equivalent, I'll keep on dividing by 16. And you'll see it will, it will definitely be less than 5 and 2. Definitely. Okay, so that is kind of an observation. All right. Now, let's say I want to convert a binary number into a hexadecimal number. What will I do? Let us go to the new page. You want to convert a binary number to hexadecimal. So let's say I have this number. 1010. Okay. 1010. If this number I want to convert into hexadecimal, I can, very simple, I can refer to this, right? This one, 1010. So that means A. Right? 10. But what if this number is very big? What you will do? So what we can do is first convert it into decimal. Okay. So we'll have some number. Let's say I'm okay. So this is not the right uh, conversion, but I, I, I'm definitely wrong here. But let's say this number turns out to be 526. Okay, let's say, let us assume the decimal conversion of this number is 526. 
Now to convert into hexadecimal, what you will do? You will keep on dividing this with 16. Right? So this will be 2, uh, 6, 3, something like that. And you keep on dividing. And whatever you collect from here, you will get X. Right? So that is how you convert a binary to hex. Okay? But that is very inefficient, right? Very inefficient, very lengthy. Very inefficient method because, I mean, I want to convert some a binary number to hexadecimal. Where does this decimal comes into picture? Right? So why do I need to add decimal? Okay? So what is what is the what is then alternative what can we do so what can we do here is let us remember this and in this also you just have to remember these last one because they are kind of you know uh, confusing but the, if i remember this and the one thing that i've told here the minimum number of bits required to store a hexadecimal number is 4 then i can come to uh, a good solution here so what i'll do i'll start making groups of 4 And definitely I'll start off with this side, right? Because as you can see here, if there are two digits and I want to make it four, what I'll do, add zeros here. Okay. If I had started from here, I, I had to add zero here, which will completely change the number, right? Zero, zero, one and one, zero, zero, complete difference, right? So I will not add zeros on the right. I'll add zeros on the left. And that is the reason I'll start making groups from the left. Then and then only I'll have some spare numbers on the left. Right? So group numbers from the group num groups have to be made from right. I mean from right to left, like this. Okay. Now individually I know the conversion. What is individually the conversion? This is 2. Okay. This is 10. 10 is A. This is uh 1, 14, uh, 12, 13, right? So this is E or uh, uh, D. Okay, and this is 6. Okay, so let us try to uh, see that also, what I'm saying. So we're talking about 4, uh, how many? 4 numbers, right? So this is 0, 0, 1, 0. What is 0, 0, 1, 0? This one. Mm. Right, so that I've written 2. What is 1, 0, 1, 0? Is 10, that is A. Okay, similarly, 1, 1, 0, 1. What is 1, 1, 0, 1? D. That is what I've written. And what is 0, 1, 1, 0, 6. So this is the hexadecimal conversion of this number. Right? One step. You don't have to convert anywhere. Now if you do the same thing with this procedure also, you will get the same number. 2A D6. Okay? So this is how you convert a binary to hexadecimal number. Yeah. So, sir, in this, we are directly making groups of four. And whenever we are not getting a group of four, we are adding zeros to the left. So, uh, it is not changing the number, right? Right. You, so, it does said... not, uh, yeah. so, it does not add or subtract anything from the number. Because if the number changes, then the complete question changes, right? So, that is not what we want to do. We, we, we want to make changes to the number such that it does not affect or impact the number. Right? That is the reason, Make uh, I mean, start making group from left and add zeros, remaining zeros to make it a four, uh, I mean, a group of four bits. That is what we have to do. If this is the case, what if I want to convert a binary into octal? What will I do? Groups of three. Right, groups of three. Why groups of three? Because three bits are the minimum bits required to store a uh, binary number. Right, so I'll start making groups of three like this. Again, the groups of three have to be created from left only. One added zero. So this again stands for two. This stands for five. This stands for three. This is two again, and this is six. So this complete is the octal representation of same binary number. Okay. So I mean, this is what we need to know in number system. Four number systems, their representation, permissible uh, digits, and how do we convert from one to the other. Okay. Now, with this information, you should be able to very easily do question number 12. Okay. Let me go to that. Okay. So, I'll have to open the question also.
स्पीक टू प्रैक्टिस असाइनमेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व दिस वन राइट so i'll just open it in a new tab so that i can shift between because i'll be referring this table okay so let me first write what the number is what is the number u plus 543a9 u plus 543a9 okay all the unicode representation of number will have this okay all the unicode number representation will have this so this only represent that okay the number followed by plus is a unicode number that's all okay so you just ignore this so what are we left with 5 4 3 8 9 so what do you think is the number system of this number hexadecimal hexadecimal why because of this right i have 5 4 3 8 9 Which is valid numbers? I mean, definitely invalid for binary and octal. So they are both are gone. Now these are valid, uh, valid for decimal, but this A is not. So A can be accommodated only by hexadecimal. So this is hexadecimal number. Okay, hexadecimal number. So if I take the reference of previous page conversion, if I can convert from this to this, this to this, I can also go back from this to this, right? i can also go back from this to this place individually i can take number and i'll start representing in the group of 4 because we are writing hexadecimal number, right so that is what i'll be doing in the next step so if this is a hexadecimal number every number of this has to be represented by 4 bit binary doesn't matter if there need 4 bit or not but we'll have to do that right so 5 5 is 1 0 1 but i want to do it with 4 so i'll add 0 here every time Okay, now this four. So this is one zero zero. I'll add four here. Just make sure that, I mean, this four has to be represented like this, right? So this zero will impact this, but not impact this. Every number has to be treated individually. Okay, and the numbers, the MSB for this number is this. MSB for this number is left to it, right? So what is three? One one. So how many uh, zeros I have to add? These these many, right? Zero zero one one is three. What is a? So one zero one zero because a is ten and ten is one zero one zero. What is nine? One zero zero one. Okay. One zero zero one. So that is about hexadecimal numbers that we need, and that's all right. This is what yeah. we wanted to do. So sir, here we each we treat each number as a separate. Yeah, um, because if this is a hexadecimal number, every number has to be represented with four bit binary, right? that is the reason i am writing four bit even if they you know do not take it or not because if we are not doing this how can we make group of this and come back to four if this zero is not here getting now sorry can you repeat what i am saying is if i do not put zero here hmm. if i do not put zero here this one will come here right yeah it will be 1 100 and if i go back to this i will not be going to four i will be going to something else T, right? So for that conversion to you know have consistency throughout, I have to treat every number as individual number and convert it with four bit binary. Okay. Now this is the actual information that has to be converted and stored. Actual information. Okay. And in the week two, you may have studied about actual information and the context. Right. So the where does the context come from? The context come from this table, this particular table. So I need to choose which one has to be stored. So whether I need one byte to show the information, two bytes, three bytes, or four bytes. Okay. And how do I do that? I'll see the free bits required or free bits uh, allowed in a particular byte. Okay. So in one, uh, let us count this also. So these are because these are four. I mean five individual numbers. Converting into hexadecimal will give me twenty bits because five into four. Okay, so without counting, we can say that this is twenty bits. All right. So let us see where does uh, where do these twenty bits get accommodated? Definitely in fourth byte, right? I mean, this twenty bits can be accommodated by four bytes and not three. Why? Because uh, the permissible bytes are sixteen. 
Now, why permissible bytes are 16? Because this 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0 is the context. Okay, and that is anyway taken by the system. We cannot store our own information in that. What is our own information? 5, 4, 3, and Okay, so we will be storing information only in the free bits and not the specified bits. Okay, and this cross represent free bits. Okay, so here if you see in the fourth byte, I have 21 free bits and I'm, I wanted to store 20 free bits or 20 bit information. How do I make it 21 bit without changing the interpretation? Without changing the meaning, I add one zero here, right? So this is now yes. 20 bits. Okay. Once I have, so this information is 21 bits and in the four byte thing, the four byte information of table, I have 21 free bits. So I'll just place these numbers there, wherever the free bits are there in sequence, uh, sequence in the right sequence, right? So if I see this, I have. 4 times 1 and 1, 0. Okay. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 0. Okay. And then I have 3 free bits. Similarly, in the next bit, I have 1, 0 and 6 free bits. Again, I have 1, 0 and 6 free bits. Again, I have 1, 0 and 6 free bits. Okay. So I keep on adding this information. Right? So I'll start off with these three bits because three bits are required here. Right? So it will be 0, 0, 1. Right? So we are done with this part. Then I have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 because I need six bits or I can store six bits here. So it will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay? So we are done with this six bits. 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. It is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And the remaining 6 bits. 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Alright. So the information is stored. Now UTF conversion. UTF 8 is again. All these representations are stored in hexadecimal. Because it is an efficient way. Right. So it is able to store. I mean, how it is efficient? See, it is taking up this, I mean, this long number and storing it into only five individual numbers. That is why it so, is. So, uh, sorry to interrupt. I couldn't understand the last part of it, sir. Could you repeat that again? I mean, how did you get that one 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 zero? This one. I have referred yeah. to this this thing. Okay. Okay. So this that is the reason. Okay. Yeah, so that is the reason this table is given. What does this mean? I mean, I how did I choose the fourth one? Because the information that I wanted to store was 20 bits. 20 bits. Yeah, that I understood, sir. Okay. So just I use these bits. And okay. uh, so these are the specified bits, which I cannot change. And only I can put my information in the crosses. Okay. Got it, right? sir. So that's what I've done. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now, this is a binary. Okay. This is a binary. How do you convert it into hexadecimal? Okay. You start making groups from the left. How much group or how long that group should be? Four bits. Right? So it will be this, this, all right. Now with this, I'll individually write the hexadecimal equivalent. Okay, so this is F. This is one. This is 9, right? F, 1, 9. Then this is 4. This is 8. This is uh, E because this is 14, right? Uh, this is A. 1, 0, 1, 0 is A. And then we have 1, 0, 0, 1. That is, uh, what is it? 9 again. So this is the UTF representation of the information that we want. Okay. So your right. representation will have this hexadecimal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything after uh, uh, ASCII eight bit. Sorry. I mean all the representing. I mean all the encodings after eight bit UCS two UTF eight will be stored in hexadecimal or will be represented in hexadecimal. Okay. See, because see, if if I it is not wrong to say that this is UTF eight uh, representation. But you see that how long it is. 
even if you want to you know give a small number you will require so many bits to uh, to represent it into binary so we just want to make it compact by using hexadecimal so four bits are taken uh, by each hexadecimal bit or digit that is the reason we are using or representing it into hexadecimal this is again a utf8 representation only but uh, the better representation would be to do it in hex okay any doubt in this question okay so this is just for in, for your information and your you know practice in convergence otherwise this information is not that relevant we don't ask such questions in exams also so yeah many of you may have lost interest after this point so uh, so don't have to worry about such questions uh, such questions will not come but questions related to these convergence definitely you can expect Which right one? so this convergence page number 1 to 5 okay. Okay, question number six is just for your reference, understanding, and things, right? Yes. So I the hope this is clear. Question. Sorry. The practice assignment question. This is what this practice assignment. Yeah. That is that what also I'm. Also, it's important. No, so that is important. That is important. This is what I'm uh, uh, explaining here, right? So this is for I mean that uh, uh, that question test your conversion. Uh, I mean, how do you convert, right? such questions directly will not be asked but questions on conversions from one system to other you can definitely expect okay so that is what i wanted to give of uh, in this uh, first part of the session and now let us jump to the ginger of it, okay so before going to that if there is any doubt let us clear that okay any everything is clear with i mean things that i have said i i hope that is clear sir i was slightly a uh, tangential question is that mm -hmm. you could ask so we just got our lab eval results if you mm -hmm. have questions on that which is the right session to take it up in uh questions on the reports yeah the lab eval report uh the lab whatever assignment evaluation right 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 so uh, i mean it's not so much about disputing but just to understand where have we gone where have i gone wrong Uh, which is the right forum to take it up on? Uh, I'm not I mean, basically, we try to do that in uh, practice and activity, such as uh, this session, such as this. But uh, we have some content to give. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, let us clear this in the next session. So, okay, sure. Okay, can you show me? I uh, mean, can you give me your roll number so that I can go through your submission also? Yeah, because I was super confident I did well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I'll just should I just ping it in my uh, in the window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can tell me. I'm just noting. Yeah, once again, I'm just going it to it so that I say it correctly. Two uh, one F. Two one F. Twenty one F. Yeah. Three zero zero two nine seven five. Three zero zero two nine seven five. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll I'll go through it. Sure. And because uh, in the in the portal it said hundred out of hundred test whatever passed, but right. later I think the private test cases there some issues. Okay, fine. So I'll go through it and I'll let you know. Yeah, more from like what have I done wrong so that I correct it in the future. So, sir, is there any private test cases in that uh, assignment one? Means as the lab assignment two. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I am asking that in lab assignment week two. Is huh. there any private test cases? Because in my portal it is showing zero by zero private test pass. Yeah. So uh, this is for week two or week two. Week two. Week two. So you may, I mean, you should be able to see the result now in the courses. Uh, sorry, grades. Uh, it is showing that test run score hundred out of hundred. That is okay. See, what happens is when you submit. uh before the deadline no private test cases are run that is the reason zero out of zero okay because no run no pass all right after the uh, deadline the all the te private test cases will uh, will be run on your submission and then based on that you will get a final score which should be visible on the grade in the grade star but in grade star there is uh, only a week to assignment score is given no score regarding that lab assignment Sir, we got a email regarding that. No, no. Uh, there is yes. an email. Email. Even yeah, in the portal. Even in the portal. One second. Even uh, in the. One second. 
so there is an email which gives the details of the evaluation but even in the portal it is showing the lab assignment score right right that is what i what i am referring so actually in my portal it is not showing the lab assignment score just, just refresh it yeah either you can refresh or again you can tell me your roll number i'll try to get it updated yeah sir please note my roll number because i have already refreshed right right okay okay tell me uh, 21f yeah 300 all right 2231 okay i'll see i mean what is the issue okay but i guess you may have got the report okay so you, the score on the report is something that you can refer to well hello sir okay. in my case it yeah. is showing 95.56 yes. but i don't know what kind of what's wrong sorry what is it the report has came mail check the mail report has okay. came okay 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 yeah i mean see the reports may have been uh sent to you just this evening okay? yeah yeah right so okay, you can just uh, wait uh, uh, if somebody got uh, it is in the process it is in the loop right so they are coming so you can check on report uh, you, you can keep checking your mail and you'll see the report definitely those are submitted okay so the question you were discussed mm -hmm. discussed sir can you please uh, tell me how to refer that table okay yeah so what i'm yeah let me share a minute yeah can you see the screen yes sir ah, so what i'm saying here is i want to store information that is 20 bits long okay so this is how is this 20 bits long information this is coming from this right all right now let us go to the table so why why is it 20 bit sir i missed the initial part because, because 543a9 is the information that we want to store and we convert it into binary yeah so four four bits uh, so each. for each one it's four bits right uh, because that is a utf8 four bit system we are using no not the four bit this is unicode okay but unicode is again represented in hexadecimal see one is the uh, i mean one is the format or the uh, encoding in which you store information and one is the representation okay the storage okay. encoding here is unicode and the representation is hexadecimal okay so 543a9 each represent a single uh, a number in hexadecimal which represents to or which uh, expands to four bit binary number okay so i have five uh, such numbers so four bits into five uh, that will give you 20 bits Right, so you need to store 20 bits of information. Okay. okay. Now, okay, fine. I think I closed that tab. No, I didn't. Yeah. So now, if you see here, this this one byte. If you want to store seven bits, you would have taken one byte. If you wanted to store 11, you would have taken two. Similarly, wanted to store 20. So that's why you need this. I mean, you will need four byte to store information. And um, if you need four byte, this is how the information is stored. Okay, this is our meaning. You can store your your information. What is your information? This these bits. Okay, your information can only be stored in this access and not in ones and zeros. But you have to use them because that is the context of the information, right? So you have seen in the week two that there is context and the actual information. Both has to go so that the other system or wherever this information is being transferred, understand it and retrieve it or show it to you, right? So you need to store this also and you store, you need to store the actual information also. So what I've done, I've just placed the actual information in place of this process. Okay. And then I came up with this long number and then I converted this into hex. Right. So that is what uh, we have to do. So can you go back to that uh, table? Uh, so what is the last column? What is this uh, 10 triple F? X, what, what is this? Same thing, same thing. Conversion of that into X. Okay. Okay. Conversion of whatever is given here in yeah. one byte, two byte. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 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 you can call it uh, probably four byte information, right? Yeah. So ultimately, if you convert it into X, you'll see something like this. So you can see this, right? Maximum expressible encoding uh, encode value. We are using one of it, but what is the maximum uh, and possible encoding value? That is what we are seeing. Okay. And sir, you chose four byte because it is storing uh, 
Oh, hexadecimal number, right? UTF-8. We, we chose four bytes because we wanted to store 20 bits and we cannot see how many are free bits. For example, if you want to store a 5 GB, 5 GB movie in your system, in a drive in your system, and one drive is 2 GB, one drive is 3 GB, and one drive is 8 GB, which one will you choose? 8 GB one, right? So this is what this is. Okay. So the first byte allows you to store seven free bits. Okay. Smaller than what you wanted to store. Second byte gives you 11 free bits. Again, lesser than what you wanted to store. Similarly, third, but finally, uh, the fourth one gives you or allows you to store 21 bits. And what do you, how many do we want to store? Or do we have to store 20? So that's why we use four bytes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, sorry if uh, this question is going to irritate you, but now I'm a bit confused. So the UTF and Unicode are two different systems. Right. Okay. UTF is uh, an encoding technique. It is an encoding technique in which you encode a, uh, a character and then you store it. Okay. Unicode is a specific uh, representation of a code point. This might uh, represent a symbol in your in general system. Okay. Okay. That's what it means. Or maybe it represents a character in Unicode system. But if you want to store it, you will convert it into a proper, uh, you know, uh, some system that goes on throughout some common base system, which is one of it is UTF-8. Even generally, you will see UTF representations. And that's why we are converting into UTF-8. Okay, is that okay? Okay, so yeah. I mean, let's not uh, go into details of this much. I'll stop sharing at this point, and we'll start off with whatever what is the you know more important to this uh, with respect to this lecture, right? So we'll start off with Jinja, and uh, uh, Shivani will take away. I mean, take ahead from take the session ahead from here. Okay, so all right. Let, if there are more doubts on this thing, we'll take in coming sessions. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'll share this uh, uh, the the Jamboard that I've used. Right. I'll. Give, give a printed format of what we have seen today. Okay, so I'll just hand to yeah. I'll just hand over to Shivani. You can take up uh, at this point, Shivani, if you're there. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. So now we will go ahead with the second part our, of our agenda. That is, we will discuss some basics about the Jinja. Okay. So so far, what we have learned. We have learned how to make static web pages using HTML and CSS, right? So uh, in today's session, uh, we will learn about the basics of Jinja, why we need Jinja, and how we are going to use Jinja. Okay. So so far, we have seen we have created uh, static web pages using HTML and CSS. So uh, there, uh, our data was fixed. It it was static, right? Suppose if I want to use this HTML and if I want to uh, manipulate some part of the data so how we are going to do that uh, do that that we will see in this lecture okay uh, so uh, before going ahead with that uh, let's uh, like i will take one example uh, suppose i have one controller uh, let's consider uh, that it is a black box just because i don't know what it is actually going to do uh, i'm just taking an example okay so if that controller asks the view that what do you need and the view says that I need three. Uh, I need three things. Uh, that is name, place, and profession. So what controller is going to do? Uh, like controller is not uh, able to store things, right? So what controller will actually do? It will go to that place where data is actually stored. Okay. So uh, based on that, controller gets info uh, from where that particular data is stored. Uh, and this is uh, idea behind template. So, uh, but where we will put that data, that is something which is decided by template. Okay. So, uh, for example, I have these three things, right? Name, place, and profession. So, suppose I have uh, one basic uh, template which uh, stores these three data. Okay. And suppose I have a group of people. Okay, uh, we can say we have 50 group of people and I have one basic HTML or basic template uh, which has only these statements, but it contains the three things, name, place and profession. And I want to manipulate uh, this uh, template according to the uh, number of people. Okay, so like uh, 
uh, I uh, like one thing that I can do that I will have to create all these templates for the 50 students uh, for 50 people, right? Or else what I can do, I can use, uh, I can use uh, some kind of formatting where I will uh, put some placeholders or I will put some variables such as place, uh, name, place and profession. And according to the uh, according to the student or that person, that uh, that data, uh, the template should be able to manipulate. OK, this is the idea, basic idea behind Jinja or we can say basic template. OK, so I will show uh, that with one example. OK, so uh, we are going to uh, learn about uh, the very basic template uh, just to give you an idea and analogy. Suppose I was talking about three variables, right? Oh, I'm just sorry. Uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, so actually, ma'am, I'm asking that you have not shared shared your screen, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Okay. So what I'm doing? Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, ma'am. Is it visible? OK, so uh, for uh, uh, learning Jinja, let us first start with a very basic template that is format strings. Uh, you might be aware of that, right? So uh, suppose I have three variables that I was talking earlier, uh, such as name, place, and profession. So how do we create format string? I will simply type F. And within this, what I will write? This is some string, OK? So in case of format strings, what do we do? We will use this curly braces, OK? This is uh, known as placeholder, OK? So if I write. Uh, okay, so what? So in case of uh, format string, what do we do? Uh, we have these variables, and these variables is storing some sort of data. Okay, so with the help of format string, what we are doing? We are uh, creating this. We have these variables. Okay, such as name, place, and profession. So we are giving these placeholders. Okay, so uh, by using this format string, I can easily manipulate my data, such as name, place, and profession, and accordingly. It will give me an output. So I can use the same statement that is my name is I live in and all those things. And based on the data, it is able to manipulate that statement. This is uh, something which is similar to Jinja. So if uh, if we run this statement, if we run this program, what we can see, the output is my name is Shivani, like Shiv. I live in Chennai and I am analyst. OK, so what it is doing, this is a basic template 
and it is able so uh, suppose if i change data like if i write anything okay suppose if i change so if i change the data then again using format string i can manipulate this statement okay so this is a very sort of a basic template okay but uh, in case of jinja uh, okay i will first come to another thing okay so this is a very basic thing okay uh, let's come to html so so far what we have done we have created static web pages okay uh, but suppose if my data is dynamic so as i have earlier told i have uh, if i have uh, around 50 people and accordingly i want to manipulate my data so like uh, then i will have to create 50 different static web pages right but with the help of jinja i will only write uh, one template and uh, like uh, i have my document which is to be rendered and i also have the information where it should be rendered and what should be manipulated this is something which is uh, called as template okay and uh, to achieve this we will use jinja jinja is uh, used for templating okay so this is regarding format string okay so now we will see how we use jinja so this is something uh, which is the uh, basic for uh, uh, like templating or using jinja now we will see how we are actually able to do this so you might have question that why we we can't use format string for this okay so this is just a basic template okay uh, it doesn't have something uh, like a programmatic nature to it but with the help of jinja uh, we are able to create html programmatically like uh, we can add for loops to it we can use uh, conditional statements like i will show you with that uh, with examples so now let's uh, move ahead with jinja so for that you will have to import the module jinja2 And for creating this template, we will use template from Jinja2. Ma'am, the extension of this file remains .py, is it? Yeah, yeah. We are okay. using Python okay. for this. OK. Yeah. So first of all, I'm importing this template from Jinja2. OK. So what So what are the steps? We will first create some text Jinja that is template. Then, then, no, you will have to install that. That is external library. You will have to install that. For that, you will have to use pip install Jinja2. Then it will uh, download this module into your system. Okay. As I have already downloaded, I am directly using it. OK. So for templating, we will use this function that is template. OK. So how we do that? There are basically three steps. OK. So what I will do, the step one is, we will create some sort of text. How do we create multi line strings? We will use three double quotations, right? Ma'am, could you zoom in a little bit? Okay, SPL. Yeah, it's not visible. Now, is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Perfect. Okay. So, what we are basically saying that how we can use uh, this templating in our HTML. Okay. So, that's what I'm going to show. So, what we will have to do, we will take this text. One minute. Thank you. 
I'm just trying to create some text. Okay. So what I have told our step one is to create some text. Okay. So this is our step number one. In step two, what we will do, we will uh, we will convert this text into template. For that, we will use template function. How do we do that? So what we have done, what we have seen in this, that in format string, what do we do in place of variable where we want our dynamic data? What we do, we use placeholders. And in case of format strings, what we use, we use single curly braces, right? But in case of Jinja, we use double curly braces. OK, just similar to this one. I want my data to be manip uh, manipulated at this place name place and profession so at that place i am using this placeholders okay similarly in jinja what i do in place of uh, like in the place i want my data to be manipulated i use placeholders but in case of jinja i use double curly braces okay so this is step number one that we have created some text that is uh, we have used some string in step number two what we do we use template function. So I have used this variable med underscore temp is equals to template. So what this basically do, this helps uh, this Jinja to know that, yes, this is uh, the place where I want to manipulate my data. With the help of the template function, I have used this string. I have passed it over here. And now it is uh, it has become template. OK. In step number three. We render it. With our data. Okay. So now, what I do? So, so far, what I have done, I have this text. OK, now I have converted this text into template. But the template in this template, I have not passed any data. So you can consider uh, this as kind of fill in the blanks. OK, so so now I will have to pass some data as well, right? So as to get this complete HTML. OK, so I have first this text. Now I have converted into uh, the template. So now it has become template. So in the third step, I will render it with the data. So what I will do, I will use dot render. And in this, I will pass my data. So I have three variables. So I will pass 
data for three variables. Data analyst. Yeah, I can write in. So to display the output, what I will use in function. Okay, let's save this. Let's see the output. So can you see what it is doing? It is taking the same template that we have given earlier, right? Can you see this? From which line? It's taking the same data. Wait. Wait, one minute. How do I use in HTML page, direct HTML page in, to mm -hmm. make it during making a website? Yeah, yeah, I will tell. OK, so what uh, can you see this? That what it is doing, we have this template, basic template, right? And we have this play, uh, we have these variables, right? So basically, what, what is being done in this, we have this template, and we are passing our data in this line. So according to our data, we are able to create different HTML pages, like the basic templates, OK? so. Uh, According to our data, now it is able to create this HTML. Are you able to see this? Yes, ma'am. OK. So it is taking the data which I am passing. So ma'am, and right now you've passed it as a list or some, as a uh, this thing, name, place. So I can pass a data frame in this as well, right? Yeah that uh, yeah we can do all those things and that we will see in our next session solve with instructor session uh, okay. you also have a lab assignment uh, related to this right so basically i wanted to give you some basic idea like how it works okay so basically we see that this is how we are able to uh, create the basic template and we are able to create the html uh, according to the data okay here i can uh, manipulate my data I can uh, like I can so suppose if I want to uh, change this name place or anything so directly what I have to do I will use this statement and simply in, in the place of name uh, like in the place of name place and profession I will uh, keep another data and that is how I am able to uh, get this HTML with that data okay so basically this is what we are doing in Python okay but in case of uh, like uh, we want it to get uh, created by itself for that we will use file handling and that we will see in our next session okay so what uh, let's explore some more things about jinja okay so so far we have seen how to create this basic html uh, with the data I, okay uh, so, sorry to interrupt ma'am uh, but where is the html created this is like we are printing the output there is yeah no yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying okay that, like so far we have created static html okay so okay. suppose so what we have done so far if we wanted if you have if you want to create uh, this html and suppose if the data changes name place and profession right so mm -hmm. what you will have to do you will have to again create another html page writing from uh, like starting from this again doc html and all those things you will have to write it again yeah if, if your data changes but with the help of jinja we are able to pass the data manipulate the data and accordingly we will get this html created okay so in the latter weeks uh, we will learn with the help of class like how like uh, that html will be created with uh, by itself but as a, as we are not uh, aware of class at this point so what we will learn we will just simply learn how to create this html like how to 
manipulate this HTML according to the data, and uh, we will try to render it. Okay. okay so yeah. this is yeah. So I am giving you like uh, I'm starting with very basics. That's why I'm showing like how can you uh, like uh, earlier we have learned about the static pages. So like how are you able to manipulate this HTML according to the data? This is what I am trying to explain you in this session. Okay. So we have learned uh, that a very basic template. We have created very yeah. basic template using format string. And yes. Well, this HTML, uh, sorry, uh, this Jinja which template which you show is for a one yeah. static uh, web page. For one okay, so data. I will show you one thing. Okay, so now I have got this HTML with my data. Okay, so what I can do? One minute. Why it is not showing? I don't know what why it is showing only this much. One minute. Okay. So what now? What we can do? Now. If I am able to get this HTML, I know how to render it. Are we able to render this web page? How do we do that? Ma'am, we will start to uh, set a server, then we will. OK, we will simply, what we will do? We will go live. We will do this, OK? So can you see this? It this is, is being rendered. Ma'am, this is right? rendering where you are. This is the same live. HTML. What? This is rendering, ma'am, where you are going live and uh, trying to show us on a. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Pitch. So now, if I again change the data in this. Yeah. So now, if I change the data, so I will get the output as HTML with that new data. Okay. And if somehow I am able. Uh, to uh, get that data or to create uh, one HTML file, then I can use that HTML file and I can render that file, okay? And that is how I will get a different HTML web, uh, page with the another data. So, uh, like, uh, will I need uh, to create, uh, like, uh, suppose I have 50 people. So, will I need to create 50 HTML web pages? Do I need to create that? No. No, ma'am. So what? So with the help of Jinja, we are only we will manipulate our data in this part, and accordingly we are able to get the required HTML and the re, uh, required rendered HTML web page. This is the basic of templating. Okay. Is, in, I have what? Doubt. Like in, yeah. is that what we are doing? Like uh, we are uh, from Jinja. We are just copying the HTML. No, 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 no. Like. Uh, what in the letter sessions once we get acquainted with class these pages will be created by itself okay, okay. so you can see uh, so as this is third week and we are only getting acquainted with jinja this is how jinja works okay right. we are not going okay. to do like this trying to copy this what can we like can we say like uh, it's like uh, uh, like it's like a code and uh, uh, only we, we are going to change the uh, uh, page like uh, like suppose we are making two pages uh, one we already made and uh, other we want to get it from the ginger and uh, mm -hmm. we want to create something different there but we want to uh, that uh, uh, previous page uh, so it, is it like uh, we are taking that html from the above uh, like previous page and mm -hmm. uh, now we are uh, changing some something whatever we want to change in the next page uh uh, I will give you an example. You might be knowing uh, that uh, email merger. Uh, no. Sorry. Uh, okay, fine. What basically we are doing? According to data, we are able to create new HTML pages. And for that, I am not writing the code from the scratch. 
Hmm. What I'm do, uh, what I'm uh, exactly doing? I'm just simply changing my data, and according to the data, we are getting new HTML page created. Okay. okay. Right now, we can only see that the output is coming, and if we want to render this HTML page, then I am copying this and doing all those things. Okay. But in case of uh, when we will learn Flask, these pages will be created by itself, and we will. Uh, then, uh, and according to the data, we will be able to see our HTML pages. It will be rendered by itself. Okay. Got it, sir. But in this case, yeah. Okay. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah is this it. clear? Yeah. The basic idea is how we are able to uh, get the HTML pages, how we are able to manipulate it according to the data. Okay. So okay. this is what we are get, uh, trying to learn in this session. Okay, so uh, like uh, you might think that uh, we can also use format string for this. Okay, but it like we, uh, with the help of format string, we are not uh, able to run our loops or uh, do conditional formatting and all those things. This can be done with the help of Jinja. Suppose uh, in the HTML pages, uh, we might use like there could be some program right uh, where uh, we may use some for loops, if else conditions, right? So for that, we use Jinja, and I will show you how we will do that. OK, ma'am. But uh, is this clear? Up to yeah. this, is it clear? Yeah. It's, uh, it's clear. We do have to Can I ask, ma'am? Yes. Can I ask, my doubt, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, so ma'am, uh, my doubt was that uh, the pages we are creating, HTML pages, the, mm -hmm. the Jinja 2 page is uh, from, right from creating the text up to its rendering. This is for one static page, and you said that in Flask, it will be rendered automatically once we learn it. Um, yeah, yeah. So for dynamic web pages also, this Jinja will be useful. I mean, you said this for static pages, right? Web pages. Like, we can also consider these as dynamic, like uh, not mostly dynamic, uh, like partly dynamic. Okay. What okay. we are able to do based on the data, we are able to manipulate our html web page so we can call it as partly dynamic right mm -hmm. okay, okay so this is the basic idea behind that okay once we will uh so in the next session what we will do with the help of file yeah. handling we we are able to create html files we will learn that uh in the next session uh let's solve with instructor session and i will tell you what we are able to do that i am simply giving you the basic idea what we are actually going to do how actually jinja works like I was only trying to let you know, like uh, with the help of data, how we are able to manipulate this string or some sort of text. And we will then use this in case of our HTML in the next session. OK. So these three steps are basically important for creating a Jinja. Yeah. Uh, so what this string can be anything, right? Like I don't need yeah. to write HTML. I can write anything. It can be some sort of string. It can be anything, right? So what okay. I am doing, but to but for me to be able to manipulate this data at this place, I am using Jinja. So okay. I am keeping this as variable. And for using Jinja, I am giving this curly braces. So at okay. this place, I am able to manipulate my data. OK. Right? So okay. for that, yeah. I first need to convert this text. This is some sort of text, right? And it has no meaning if it is uh, like uh, it is some, uh, you can consider it as some sort of string, right? Yeah. Only in case of HTML, we know, yeah, this is the HTML page. But we can yes. also consider that it is some sort of text. Yeah. OK. So it has no meaning. Like, uh, if I try to print only temp, I will show you. Can you see the mm -hmm. same text? OK, same. Unless I create that in template, is it? Um, can you see this? Yes, ma'am. 
but it is uh, it is showing this curly braces and all those things does it have some meaning no is it able to manipulate my data it is just a piece of string right yes, yes. yes. Yeah. right so if we so only when we use this tem template thing template function it is then jinja will get to know yeah this template function only then jinja will know okay this is some template and mm -hmm. at these places like name place and profession these are something variable and according to data i will have to manipulate this okay are you getting this yes yes ma'am mm. yeah ma'am uh, whenever we create yes. an html uh, page like all this stuff and if we run it and go live so how it will look does it depend on the browser as well like if you use firefox or safari it will look different yeah that depends on browser like uh, there could be some slight difference in its representation that depends on browser you can't see much difference so then, but there can be some what uh, so the difference is not huge yeah the difference is not huge okay is, is this clear noticeable? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Ma okay. So now we will see how we can use this Jinja, uh, like uh, for uh, like how we can use loops in Jinja and if else condition. Okay. So I will first start uh, using for loop. How do we use for loops in Jinja? Ma'am. Yes. I mean, previous week we create HTML. Hmm. Using class, we don't have to write all that text, and that is what you are telling. Uh, can you repeat your question again? Unable to hear. Ma'am, I'm saying uh, that. Are you saying that using class, we don't have to create an HTML page by scratch? what i'm trying to say in this case what we are doing basically what we are doing suppose this is some sort of html and i want to manipulate this html according to my data okay so this is how i have done that okay but basically uh, this is some text right this is not html page this is only certain text and like it is not uh getting uh, it will not create html page by itself right yes, okay so uh in the latter weeks using flask and we will uh, write such a program that it is able uh, with the help of flask and all those things we are able to create the html pages by itself what uh, like what i showed here that i have this html like uh, we had this html as output and i i was trying to show like if if we try to render this part like how it will look like and it is basically able to uh, get uh, changed according to the data okay but here i just copied it right it is not getting created by itself but in second uh, in the next session that is solve with instructor session we will use some sort of file handling to create the uh, like to create Uh, the files and with the help of that it will be created by itself with uh, with the help of file handling in the next session okay but when we will learn flask then jinja is uh, already uh, comes under flask and it, it, at that time it is able to create html by itself uh, i don't know to uh, i don't need to do all these things like i currently uh, to let you understand how we are able to do this Uh, how we are able to manipulate uh, the html page according to the data i am try, uh, trying to get this output and i am copying this and trying to show you uh, with the help of this golai button or trying to render it with the help of browser but we will not do this in our later sessions this is just i am trying to let you know how basically the jinja works okay okay is that clear yes ma'am yes ma okay so now we will learn how we will use for okay suppose i have profession as list
okay suppose i have this some sort of data suppose i want to print all these professions uh, i'm trying to use for loop okay so suppose i been, uh, i want to print all these professions one by one over here okay so for that what we will do we will use for loop okay suppose it uh, had it been python like only the simple python program so what we will do we will say for item in profession and we will try to print the item right but with the help of jinja yeah. what we will do so in case of jinja how we use for loop we will use this curly braces only one curly braces and in that we will use this percentage sign okay so this is how we try to write any condition uh, any loop in jinja but in in the python uh, we will only use this for like this okay like for item in profession then we will end that uh, with this colon but uh, in case of jinja when we start a loop we will also have to end that loop and four we will write and four mm. okay so now my profession is list it is it is not a variable a single uh, data point right now it is a list okay so i want all the elements of this list to get printed okay and here what i have taken item so what i will write profession or item item ma'am where where item just because, see uh, just focus on this line okay i'm trying to use loop okay we'll put item for loop only. what i do we will put item only okay why just because this profession has three elements programmer analyst and scientist and i want to print all these three statements using the for loop okay so what i have write for item in profession so how it will go it will first go to programmer yeah. then it will go at analyst and then it will go at scientist okay so for that i uh, i i am writing for item in profession so what i want to print basically i want to print item that is programmer or analyst or scientist right i want to print item in the profession right yes okay so what i will write item is it creating confusion these two lines i can remove that if you want no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am okay just focus on this part how we are going to use the loop 15 okay. to 17 so, lines okay so what we will do so for using for loop in jinja what we do we write like this we use curly bracket in that we write uh, write percentage sign and we write for suppose i am using loop for this and i want to print all these three statements okay so what i have written for item in profession what is basically item refers to the elements of this profession list okay it like it can be programmer or analyst or scientist right so for that what i am writing for item in profession basically what i want to do i want to print this elements mam okay? i have doubt in line number 16 why we are writing that item uh, the whole line 16 like why it is in between i want to loop? display like that huh Man, i want to display like... the item okay. right okay 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 i will remove this if it is creating some confusion and like item is a variable here na we can use yeah. instead x or y we can use anything okay for your simplicity okay so if we try to enter in the loop we take care of the indentation right mm. okay that's why i am uh, leaving some space over here okay yeah. in case of like i can also write 
or i in profession what i refers to each element of the list profession right got it okay so as the value of uh, it will first take i equals to 0 and it will refer to programmer programmer and accordingly okay and accordingly yeah, i got it now okay so i want to print this item so he, now it will become i okay so basically what i want to do i want to But print uh, this element made up for that indentation if there will be no indentation then it will not work i am like i am trying to relate it with html okay it will throw error if we don't give this indentation in this string basically doesn't it does not have any sort of meaning but if we try to do this in html or simply if we try to do this in python it will throw error right just because yeah. we are entering in this loop but uh, ma'am so we need to give some yes okay okay here means that python will be it will be taking it as a for loop no 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 i am trying to relate what we do in python and what we do in jinja yes ma'am i am just saying that in jinja do we have even if you don't give this space it won't throw error but for our understanding i am giving this indentation yeah i am asking the same like it will not throw any error no 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 it won't throw any error but what i am trying to do i am trying to understand that if, if it had been an html code so i will need I mean, to give this html there is no indentation required na no suppose if it is a python okay yeah, you can consider jinja it will be indentation will be required so if you assume that it is a python then uh, yeah. we have to provide that indentation yeah so basically what is jinja it is something which is related to python and html as well so we will be writing all these things in python and we will be able to uh, uh, like create different html things right so basically if, even if you don't give this space it won't matter but for an, our understanding we are trying to give this indentation okay, okay? as we are entering loop even if we don't give it doesn't matter but for our understanding i am writing like this okay so what uh, what basically this will do this will print all the elements in the profession along with this data okay is this data confusing no, no ma'am it's all right okay so now what i have done basically i have this string or some sort of text okay this is some sort of text temp yes ma'am okay so now what i am doing i'm trying to convert this into template for that what i have done i have used this template function yeah okay so in the third step what i want to do i want my data to be rendered at this places okay name place and uh, suppose i like uh, i have written i okay so at this places i want my data why did you remove that h1 and m uh, i thought that this is creating confusion to you guys that's why i have removed that I yeah was right. was in it was it was in the line number 16 ma'am was trying to explain that's why ma'am removed that okay so now we will see what comes as output okay so now this uh, i will 27 won't you have to yeah i'm trying to yeah 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 that's what i'm doing okay but now we already have data we have profession as list so what we will do so what is this profession this profession is something which we are using in our uh, template that is profession okay yes, and what we are trying to assign uh, we will assign if we want to assign any value to it what we will do this is something which is already existing and we are trying to assign value to this this is something name place and something this yeah, is a retrieve it this is something which is related to my template okay so if i am using profession over here what does it mean i will have to give some data to it okay so in for this profession i am assigning data this i am assigning this data are you getting what i am saying yes ma'am okay even i can write anything i can write data as well okay so this is some sort of data okay and this profession is something which we are using in our jinja template this is this profession okay so what i am giving 
I have already this data, so I won't use this quotation. Okay, what I will type? Data, correct? Ma'am, in line fifteen, won't it have to be for I in data now? Because it's a referring to data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So a data is a list which is yeah. this three. Data is a list which has three elements, and I want to print all the three elements. Like this is uh, sort of I am trying to give you how we will use loops in Jinja. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just a basic example. Uh, okay, so we 27 have twenty-seven also. You twenty-seven also. You'll have to change to data only. That profession. Yeah, I have look. already changed. No, yeah, yeah, that yeah. profession. No, 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 no. Profession is the template. Yeah. Uh, I can take anything as variable. I can take I can take anything as variable in my template. Oh, but it is referring for I in profession. What is profession? That's what I'm trying to give now over here. Profession is equal to okay. data. Okay. 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 See, see, okay. see okay. what I am doing. I have this uh, uh, string. I have this some sort of data. Okay, mm -hmm. this some text. Now I am creating that into template. Okay, and in my template, I have used certain variables, placeholders. Clear, 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 ma'am. Okay, yeah. So in in place of name, I have given name. Okay, in place of place, I have given Chennai. But in place of profession, what is this profession? This is something which we are using in our Jinja template. Jinja okay, template, yeah. it refers to this. Okay, so what I have passed, I have passed this data. Which is list list, list. Yeah. this data, is it clear? Yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just show uh, the output will... once more. Yeah. Order, order is. Yes, Can you just yeah. show the output once more? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, is order is necessary? What? Then you first use name, then place, then he, location. So he's saying order, is order is necessary. No, it's no, not. No, no, no. It the... depends on us. I'm just giving one example. Yeah. No, exactly. The order in this case is not important because you're giving the keywords, right? Hmm. Okay. I can manipulate these lines. It depends on me. I can even write "I live in place." My name is. I can write anything over this. Even I can remove this if it's if if you feel that it is something which is complicated. No, no, so... ma'am. I think the question is when you're passing the parameters, is the order important? Yeah. No, no, no. It is it's not important. important. Yeah, yeah. You are asking about this. It is not important. Yeah, I am saying okay? it's not important because you have yeah. called out the keyword. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now we will see what's the output. Okay. Every time you are using this Python, then the Python yes. for page name because we are like uh, we are particularly See, what we are doing basically we are focusing mm -hmm. on how to use Jinja mm -hmm. in this session in this particular session we are just trying to learn how we are able to use Jinja okay and yes, I am I am writing this in the form of HTML just because you will be able to relate all these things in the later upcoming sessions that's why I am writing all these things. No, I was okay, asking this about is, the yeah. output which you are trying to take. I mean, Python, then the Python for dot py. .py. That's what he's asking. Okay. Yes. Now, can you see? We have again got this template. And can you see that using the for loop, I was able to print this data? Yeah. All the yes. elements. Can you see all the elements? Right, yeah. programmer, analyst, and scientist. Okay, this is how we use loops in case of Jinja. Okay, so now we will see how we are able to use condition in case of Jinja. Okay, condition means that if else, if else condition. Okay, in that, how do you remove the spaces in that output between the three professions? Okay, one minute. Yeah, uh, space. Mm. Okay, wait. Mm. 
Ma'am, recently when we uh, run that for dot p, yeah. then when the out yeah. we look at the output, there was some space. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you. For dot p, I'm not chatting. Okay, whenever we try to run this, you can see that the spaces have come. Right? That is, uh, this is what you are asking? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, can you see? This is just a temp, uh, this is some sort of a string. Okay. So, uh, so when we use this, okay, so we will have to hit enter to get this. We are using this for loop, right? We are using yes, this for loop. Okay. So what we are doing, we are in this place, we are trying to use this condition and we will now hit the enter button for this, for uh, getting into the second line, that is I. Okay, so if we can see that this, this is a text of string, this is a string, okay. So even if we leave one space or something, then my text will be affected. It has its value if we give some space or something, right? Yeah, yes. the value is there. When we are when if I am using this for loop, I am trying to enter in the new line. Okay, only after that I will get my I printed, that element printed. So I am leaving one line at this portion. I am leaving the one line. Only after that I will get my output. Yes. Yes, sir. That one line is coming over here. Can you see that all my data is getting printed into the sequence? Whatever I have given in my text. Yes. Okay. I have converted this into my template. Okay. So it will follow the same sequence. Okay. But now I have used this loop. And now to print this statement, I have used this loop. And now I am entering into new line. For getting this I printed, I will have to enter in the new line, right? So this new line gets blank. Uh, so this line gets blank. So in that place, we get for that place. Why it is again showing like a, one minute? Okay. So this space is coming just because of this for this for statement. We are using new line. Can you see? We will leave one line for this. That one line is coming as blank. Just because this is not something which is getting printed. That's why it is leaving one line. So instead of this for loop, it's spare. I mean, it is. So a... if we don't use this for loop, mm -hmm. okay, I will remove this. Suppose I don't use this for loop. Okay, and simply I write suppose if I write some sort of variable that is a and if I give its value its value as suppose a b c anything. Okay, now if I try to run this. Can you see the difference yes. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, here, that space saying, is not coming. Yes, so basically, gone. if yeah. we use for loop, we can't remove the space. It has to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just it because, see, in case of Jinja, we don't write print statement. But whatever we are writing inside this text, it is getting printed, right? It will print this doc HTML and all these lines, OK? But by, uh, when we were, we were using that for condition, 
so that statement won't be printed right just because we are using uh, using condition but we will enter into the new line right uh, while printing that item suppose yeah, i have yeah. written earlier i have uh, i have written i like for item for i in profession like that so i have entered into new line okay so will that line be printed it was condition it won't be printed so for that it is leaving one line okay so first so my first element was programmer it got printed okay again after yeah. that i had that space and for space right mm. uh, sorry i again had that for loop okay that yeah. statement so again it took one new line okay and then it printed that analyst again my for was uh, my for loop was working so it again left one line and then it printed scientist is it making sense yes ma'am because you're getting what i'm saying yeah spacing. yeah okay yeah. so one, one in line. the second example what i did i simply used one element okay so that space is not coming right. okay so yeah. suppose if we use this output Ma'am, while uh, writing for loop, do we have to change that line? One minute. Suppose now I copy this output, one which has spaces. Okay, it has spaces. Okay. Now, if I try to render this, wait, I will have to save this. now if i render this can you see that space is not coming mm -hmm. yes okay you know why just because in html in html it is like uh, it won't see the spaces it only works on the basis of the tags that we are using okay so if we if i give even if i leave uh, various lines it will only understand on the basis of tags okay so here i have not written anything any tag or uh, anything okay and i have given this three elements so what it will do it will print everything in one line okay yeah yeah okay yeah. so this is the difference what we get in uh, that jinja and uh, like uh, how it will render if we use html okay mm. so yeah. we have learned how to use for loop uh, ma'am ma is ma it can you just can yes? you can you just show the initial code once ma'am uh, i have That's removed that code top. okay i will top. write again i will write again. okay that output one no on the top ma'am the import libraries you input it the okay import jinja okay. 2 we will use this import uh, from jinja 2 uh, import template okay okay and uh, yeah if you can just write that code for that for loop again please yeah i will do that okay how we do when you write for for loop hmm to print that list we have to change that line for writing colon colon a colon colon uh, a sorry uh, curly braces we are writing curly braces yeah 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 we are writing a in curly braces yeah so when we, will, we write for so loop, while, we have to change that line so if we want no 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 this will remain same this is sort of variable it won't be changed in case of jinja if we want to use variable we will use like that we will have to use double cur uh, double curly braces okay no ma'am i'm asking for yes when you write for loop yeah in jinja so hmm. to print what we are uh, printing we have to write that in next line or we can just write beside the that for loop question is not okay uh, what are you saying you yes, want to this... say like that sir do i need to write it over here or or can i can i can write it beside it right that for condition yes yes ma'am yes, yeah ma i can also do that that i will show you like uh, when we will uh, i will also take two examples uh, from activity questions then i will tell you it is also fine if we use like that okay 
so uh, what we have seen if, uh, in case of jinja it is taking spaces just because we are using these conditions and for loop that's why it is leaving spaces but if we try to render the same output in html it is not making di uh, the difference right so now we will see how we will use condition is this clear for loop uh, yes ma'am uh, for loop you had to write the text back again ma'am you had removed the text or if you will share this later that's fine yeah 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 i will share uh, share everything later yeah because there was okay. a for loop which you okay i will show you wait okay. what we do we will use a single curly braces right in mm -hmm. that what i will write percentage is percentage sign okay in that what i will write for for your understanding i am writing i for i in so what i am using i am using this data okay so yeah. for uh, so for removing confusion i will take data only okay so i will write for i in data okay what i want to print i want to print i okay now in case of jinja if we are using loop we will also have to end the loop so what i will do i will again write i will write and for okay this clear Ma so to remove confusion in space between end and for yeah oh, it is not necessary we can even give yeah it is not that necessary but uh, to see uh, very uh, like uh, it should yeah. be clear to us that's why we can we give space and it is not necessary okay oh. so for removing the confusion what i am doing i am using this variable data so so in this line so in this line this data refers to the variable that i am using in jinja this is the same data okay this data refers to this data is it clear yeah yeah okay yeah. now i want to give data to this data okay so what i have i am giving i am giving this data okay so what i will write i have already given name is equals to shivani place is equals to chennai and for this variable i am giving data but that data is already defined i have defined this data over here list so i will directly write data equals to data this is hmm. how we will write for loop in jinja when the right the side data is the list name right list okay. data what we are doing we are trying to assign some value to this variable and these are the variables which is related with our template our jinja yeah. okay and in this variable we are trying to assign the value that value is basically some sort of data okay so this right hand side data refers to this this data yeah. is it clear clear ma'am yes ma okay so this is how we use for loop in jinja okay so okay. now we will uh, try to see how we use conditions in jinja i will take a very simple example what are the step step 1 is to create some sort of data okay yeah. this is my step 1 okay create text okay Okay, I will take very simple example. Step one 
so what i have said for using condition we will use uh, for use uh, while we were using for loop we have used this singer curly bracket and in that we have written this percentage sign right while using this condition what we will do we will again use this curly braces and i will write if if 1 n sub what i want to print this is some variable sub okay so for simplicity i am taking this variable and this data variable same okay so if i am writing one condition if 1 in sub what i want to print i want to print so for for variable what we use we use double curly braces right yes similarly for else so in case of jinja if i am starting this condition and i will have to close this condition as well so i will write and if okay so i have this is a very simple condition i have write if one is there in this sub what i want to print that my course is this mad1 okay this variable okay else what i want to print that my course is different okay so what is the second step we will create this text into template what is my step number 3 i will render it with the help of data right output is equals to med underscore temp dot render okay so here i have used this variable sub right i have used this variable sub yeah okay so i will have to give data to this variable yeah how i will give sub this sub refers to this variable which i am using in jinja mm. right this is equals to sub so this sub is a variable refers to this data okay this data String. is it clear okay this sub refers to this variable that i am using in jinja and this and right hand side sub refers to my data yeah. is it is it confusing this yeah. sub what both subs are using create, creating sometimes confusion <laughs> sub equal to sub can, can you write the top one as subject okay. ma'am just write no, the subject, top one as yeah. subject 
top one. You have to differentiate. The mad, mad. Yeah, if you can write, the, yeah, then it okay. will be easier. This is basically my data. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm saying. To avoid confusion, what we usually do, we take this variable and we will replace it with the data. We keep all like we keep these variables same to avoid confusion. That's why that's what we are doing. We are keeping these names as same. So anyhow, if you are not able, you are getting confused or some that mm -hmm. output will be same. That's why we are uh, taking name similar. Okay, so this is subject. This is some sort of data. This mad one. This is data, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And this SUB sub, it is the variable that I'm using in my Jinja. Okay. So yeah. now I will have to give data. What is my data subject? Subject. Right. Now I yeah. want to print this output. Now we will see what's the output. What should be the output? It should print my course yeah, is mad one. mad one. Just because it is satisfying that condition, right? Let's see what's the output. Okay, okay, sorry. String requires string, yeah. Just because this is my string, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see this output? My course is mad one. Yeah. Why this is coming? Because Just because what's my condition? If this one is there in my data, then it should print this statement that my course is mad one, right? If the condition it is false, then what it should print? It should print that my course is different. Yes. So we will check for another condition. Suppose in place of sub. I give something which is random, okay? So do I have this one in my data? No. no. So the condition is false. So what it should print? That my course is different. You can right? change that in uh, the in that uh, top, this thing is sure mad one, just give mad two. I think then also it won't work. It'll, uh, it'll show. Yeah, it will work like that different. also. Yeah. Okay, wait. Let's see this one. Then. Can check okay. this one. Okay, so let me proceed this. Okay, suppose my data is ABC. Can you see? Yeah, yes. So what else else part is running, right? And it is showing my course is different. Hmm. Suppose here, if I change, OK. No, then it will say my course is mad one. Why? No. It it's it's different. Different. So what condition, condition is... I am using? What I am using? This is my data, right? This Correct. is currently mad two. Okay. What What is my condition? If this one is there in my variable or in my data, then it should print that my course is that data. Okay. Suppose if this is mad one. Okay. So one is there in my data, right? So the so what I have written if condition. If Achha, one, one is there, one, one. Oh, 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 it's looking at one. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got so it. now here I have changed the data. Now it is mad two. Okay. So one is not there in this data, right? We have two. So this if condition will be false. So else part will run. Correct? Yeah. If this condition is false, 
then it will run the second part else part okay. right yes, yes that's why it is printing my course is different okay now we will see another example how we will use for and if in the same statement the same question ma'am yes ma'am when in previous step you had uh, written sub equal to abc yeah in in output ma'am in line 50 right yeah and, and abc is nowhere in my code here in this line i can give oh i'm sorry see this is the line where i give my data and according to my data my template is rendered right so yes, i can give any data okay in uh, like uh, in place of subject i can write any data okay so yes. first of all i have used this variable okay i have used this data that is subject equals to mat2 or mat1 okay but i can okay. also give any data at this point and according to that data this template will be rendered okay okay right got it understood okay now we will see how we will use both for loop and if condition in our same template in the same example i have created test 3 i think right okay so i will use this example so that's like for avoiding confusion what we do while using the data and variable uh, like data this data and while using data as variable what we will do we will use same same variable name so as to avoid confusion so even if uh, mistakenly uh, you have uh, like written something wrong the output will remain same so to avoid confusion now onwards what we will do we will write same variable name okay okay Okay, just one. You copied the output, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay, so I have this. now in this i have already use for okay now we will try to use condition okay how do we write we will use single curly braces percentage sign if what i want to check this is my data so i want to print the elements which has t in it okay if if t in i if t is there in my element then only it will print otherwise it will not print okay i will use only if part suppose okay so in this program what is happening as of now i will remove this i think this will create confusion
so what i am doing i am using both for loop and if condition in this single statement okay i am using loop and condition in my program okay so what is my data so what is my first step i have created this text then i have made it as template now if i want to uh, render it i will pass data okay so what i will do so how it is working so it is checking single uh, we are using for loop right so it so what i am writing for i in data what this basically is doing it is checking single element from from my list data right okay so after that we are using if condition what is there in my if condition if t in i what does it mean first of all for loop will run okay so it will come over here programmer okay now i am using if condition okay so what it will do it will check whether t is there in that element i refers to the element of this list data right so what it will do it will check whether t is there in my element that is i here it is programmer right so now it will check whether t is there if t is there if my condition satisfies then only it will print that element okay is it clear how this loop uh, how this uh, how it is going to work hello yes ma'am is it clear how this program yes. will work clear okay so what clear ma'am no doubt yeah now we are creating this into template and now we are giving data so this data is this data this list and this data is the variable that i'm using uh, using in jinja so what should be the output it should print analyst and scientist just because these elements have t in it right so it should basically what it should do it should print analyst and scientist right are you getting what i'm saying yes ma'am okay so we will see what's the output Can you see the output? What's the output? Analyst. What is coming scientist. in the output? Analyst and scientist. Why only these two are coming? Just because what we have used in our condition, if t this t is there in our element, then only I want to print this output. Is this clear? Is yes, it clear? Yes, ma'am. Clear. Okay. This is how we use for loop. Uh, this is how we use loop and condition in Jinja too. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we will see some examples which are there in activity. Okay. So what is so this is similar to what we have taken, right? So what is happening over here? One minute. Are you able to see the question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is similar to what we have discussed, right? From Jinja to we are importing template. Okay, but here what we see that it is directly. This is we have this text, right? This is some sort of text. Mm. Okay, so here we are directly converting this text into template. In in this case, what we had, what we were doing. we were first creating some sort of text then we were using this template function to create that text into template yes ma'am right but in this question we are doing this in the single step okay we have this text 
that is number divisible by 2 and everything and what we are doing we are using all the text and we are directly converting it into template is it clear yes ma'am okay so what is written numbers divisible by 2 so again you are again can you see we are using for condition can you see we are using for condition yes ma'am okay so what then what uh, there is the uh, two uh, that uh, string here end for we can use like that this uh, this is a simple sort of text right and we are directly converting into into template so we yes, we could have two. used the single quotation but this is just to confuse you that is end of the for loop ma'am yeah that i know but it is just trying to uh, like uh, in spite of that we can also use single quotation yes okay so what basically it is doing so we have for an in range so in uh, what is the range range is from 0 to 10 0 to okay? 10 so what it will uh, so what numbers it will take 0 to 9 right 2 Zero okay. two four. So the range, yeah. We'll that's what I'm explaining. If the range is zero to ten, what it will take all the numbers from zero to nine, right? But we have this step value two. So what it will take? It will take numbers zero, two, four, six, eight, right? So what? So we are using this for loop. So and we are using this range function. So what? What it will take? First, it will take value zero, right? Then it will take value two, four, six, eight, so on. okay so what we are writing we are using this for loop and simply we are displaying that number right we have done this similar before right what we were doing for i in data we are, we were printing i yes. right and that i refers to this element similarly in this question our data is 0 2 4 6 8 right so basically what we are doing we are trying to print that element one by one using the loop correct so after that uh, i have one doubt ma'am maybe i missed that part why is those uh, inverted commas coming there this commas yes ma'am see what i said this is some sort of text or string right how do right. we write multi line strings we will use quotation yes ma'am if it is a single line i will use double quotation only single double quotation okay. like this right right but if okay. it is a multi line string i will use three double quotation right okay 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 right so right, this ma'am. is step number 1 and this is step number 2 converting it into template so in this question we are doing both the steps in one line right Ma'am, this is my text for separating output by space what i'm double quotation in between after for loop space yeah that is, is it... yeah this is question this is just to confuse you to check what should be the output okay Ma'am, that means it is used because it will separate Uh, output by space right yeah we will see what will be the output then i will explain you okay so what it is doing it is doing both the steps in the single line right this is my text this is my string okay yes, so what i will yes. write i will write double quotation right okay and yes, what i am doing i am using this for loop and what is my data and i am giving my data in this for loop okay just because we are using this range function directly we are able to give the data right 0 2 4 6 set just because we are using this step value 2 right so what it will do so what we are trying to do we are trying to print the numbers which are in the range 0 to 10 and which has step value as 2 so what are those number 0 2 4 6 8 right and now what we will do we will write Print t dot render. 
so earlier what we have used once our template is created what we did output equals to this this template dot render and we have rendered it with data right but in this question we are directly giving data just because we are using range right we have data over here right This is data, some sort of data, right? Yes, Range ma'am. zero to ten to okay. So what we are writing, print t dot render. Here also we are using two steps. What are those steps? What we did then to for the output, we have rendered this template with data, and to display that output, we used print output, right? So here, what I did, this is t dot render. I can take any variable at this place, right? so i have used that to print is it clear here what i what i did i did output equals to template dot render okay and and this variable i have printed right print output so this this all the step these two steps i did directly in this line print t dot render Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now, now see what's the output. Okay. Uh, sir, can you please mute your mic? Pindi ka wala nte. Sir, in iste mama. okay so we are using two steps in this line and again we are using two steps in this line is it clear yes clear ma'am okay now we will check what's the output it is coming over here can you see this output 02468 yes ma'am can you see this output yes ma'am okay why it is giving the 02468 just because this is what we have used in the range and this is what we have used for loop right that's why it is displaying the output as 02468 okay you might be wondering that space is coming over here right after 0 uh, between 0 and 2 this space is coming right from where that space is coming once i am running this loop okay i am printing this number so suppose the first number is 0 okay now when again i try to uh Uh, run this for loop this space is there right yes this space is coming after zero suppose if i don't want that space now if i try to run this what's the output 0246 set are you getting the difference yes ma'am earlier i had space over here and that space is between this string right this space is also considered by string that's why in the output this space is coming after 0 2 4 6 right but now if i remove this space so the output will come as 0 2 4 6 8 okay suppose i give comma after this so this is a part of string right it is written between double quotation so it is part of string so let's check what's the output can you see the difference now it yes. is taking comma after every value if i write point so what it will do it will take point after each number is it clear 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this has two strings. This line three. One is that for end four, and one is the uh, yeah. This. Okay. okay. So can you see in this string, I have used like I have used dot, or I can use space. I can use anything, but it is part of string. It is part of the string. Okay. So it will be displayed. Right. I have That's one question, ma'am. Yes. Do you have to put these two strings? One is number till that uh, n, and another it's string for n four. Or if you can remove this, then yeah, like this. Can you again see the output? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes. I will give space. Can you see the output? Zero to four six eight. Yes, the yes, double sir. quotations were given just to confuse you. Okay. Okay. But why is that? Why to confuse? <laughs> It was question, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So is this is, uh, up to this point? Is it clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. I will take one more question. This is practice question number seven. Ma'am, when we okay. can you see the question? Where is the practice question, ma'am? The in the portal itself. Yeah, no, I'm saying the usual practice assignment. Seven. Practice. Lab assignment, you're saying? No. Wait. Just show, ma'am. The just show the quest the VS Code screen. What happened? No, the question you were showing in VS Code, right? You were showing a new question. Yeah. And this is basically practice question, which is there in portal practice assignment question. Wait. This is the practice assignment, right? Yeah. One of the practice assignment question. Okay. I've taken from this assignment. Okay. This one, I think. Yeah, this one. Okay. Are you able to see my uh, see the question? Is it visible? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay, so it is again similar from Jinja to import template. Step one, my statement equals to uh, like directly. I am taking this right, this uh, this text. So what I am doing, I am taking this text and directly I am converting into template. This is step number one and two, right? So here I am again using for loop. Okay, so what is there? What I am doing? For n in range one to fifteen, now my range is one to fifteen, right? So what is uh, so uh, what will be there in the range one to fifteen? One, two, three, four, five, six, up to fourteen, uh, up to fourteen, right? So right. after that, what? But what I am doing? What I am printing? N modulo three. Right. This is modular division. Right. Remainder. Right. Yeah. So what it will print? It will print the remainder, right? So this is for loop for n in range one to fifteen. So first it will take one, then it will take two, and so on. Suppose the number is one. So now the one will come at this place. So one divided by three. So what will be the remainder? The one. remainder will be one, right? So what will be the output? The output should start with one, one. and accordingly it will run the loop, and we will get the output. Okay. So this is basically step number one and two, and this is step number three and onwards. Okay. So now we will try to run this. Let's see what will be the output. One two zero one two zero will come like that. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, why it is coming? Okay, anyways. Can you see the output? 
वन टू जीरो वन टू जीरो वन टू जीरो राइट हाउ इट इज कमिंग सो वी आर रनिंग द फॉर लू सो फर्स्ट इट विल टेक वन देन वन डिवाइड बाई थ्री सो द रिमाइंडर इज वन राइट सो इट विल प्रिंट वन आफ्टर दैट इट विल अगेन रन द लू द नंबर इज टू नाउ टू डिवाइड बाई थ्री सो द रिमाइंडर इज टू राइट सो वॉट इट विल डू इट विल प्रिंट टू नाउ द नंबर इज थ्री when the, uh, the again the loop will, uh, loop will run okay so now the number is 3 now if we divide 3 by 3 what is the remainder remainder is 0 right so accordingly we are getting this output is it clear how this is working yes ma'am yes. up to this point it is clear how we use jinja uh, how we use for loop in jinja how we use conditional statements in jinja is it clear Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any doubts in this? No, ma'am. So, if you don't have any doubts, uh, shall I close the session? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, like, are you getting some basic idea? You uh, like, uh, were you able to understand, or uh, like, uh, yes, you are not getting yes. anything? No, it's yes, ma'am. It was clear. Okay, so very in the clear. next session, uh, uh, like uh, in the practice session, uh, we will take one, uh, like a, uh, uh, we will take uh, one practice question, and uh, you will be working along with me, and uh, we will also discuss some part of lab assignment. Okay, and uh, once we are done with class, then we will use Flask with Jinja. Okay. so basically this uh, jinja we can use partly dynamic so like in the lab assignment there's a table i can keep yeah. changing the values of yeah, the yeah, table yeah. given some input yeah basically uh, on the same it, template on the same template yeah. so i don't yeah. have to create so basically what we are doing uh, this is uh, we are learning only the basics right we are not using database and all those things so what we are doing we are just simply providing you some sort of data in the lab assignment and we will be going through it okay once we right. are uh, like once we will be having idea of databases that is models and controllers and everything so in the flask application we will create database by ourselves and for that we right. will use sql alchemy okay that's right. what i told that this is uh, simply at this point we are only lear uh, learning how jinja is basically going to work okay so that till now clear. i think it is very clear to you right yes ma'am clear ma'am okay. one Thank request you. which i had made earlier also <clears throat> in this is the next session is on saturday right ma'am uh, yes sir yeah so that one ma'am if you can just uh, uh, the first 15 minutes for lab 2 if you could just take us through like the solution solution in the sense that i have some questions if i can ask yeah you were asking through. about that public yeah, and can, private yeah assessment. if i can figure out yeah 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 we will Fine. discuss uh, yes sir minutes. we will discuss but, that uh, in the next session on saturday session sir will uh, like uh, that evaluation is done by sir yeah, yeah. so he will let you know like uh, what we are basically going to do in the evaluation and all those things sure sure thank you i i okay. have one more request ma'am the saturday yes. session if it goes too long then i miss the other uh, you know live session so if uh, you could have an extra session some other time or maybe change i mean start 15 minutes earlier because it usually doesn't end in 2 hours usually takes 2 and 1/2 hours <laughs> uh at this point uh, i need to ask whether it is possible or not just because we have limited instructors and we have limited slots right so like uh, some uh, like and the sex, uh, session gets extended right so like yes uh, if it is yeah. can be done within that time or even if it is a 15 minute or 20 minute because it gets too hectic on saturdays everything is on saturday yeah 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 okay i will check with sir and i, I will ask him whether it is possible or what can we do for that okay Yes. Ma'am, yes, we have another session from nine to eleven DBMS session on Saturday. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> That is something like uh, just because as we have limited slots and we are asked to take uh, some slots in the weekends. That's why. Uh, like uh, it is clashing. Yeah, there, there is a gap between. See, your session finishes at one, but uh, I have the next session starts at two. 
which is systems yeah. command so yeah. even if half an hour is used of that then it's okay but uh, if it goes up to 2 then it will become very difficult so then 3 okay. hours and 2 more hours and okay, continue okay i'll check with the team if it uh, if something is possible and yeah, i'll let you know okay? yeah even if it extends if you can finish within you know 30 minutes more than the allotted time so that'll help okay fine i will ask the team and i will let you know okay right thank Excuse you excuse me ma'am okay yes uh, will there be any session uh, regarding uh, the solution discussion of uh, lab assignment one uh yeah we can do this either because in the practice session or in yes i think yes. is that the first 15 minutes we'll just use that to cover this part okay we will try to do that uh, do that yeah. uh, i will see whether it is possible in the wednesday session or saturday session we will try to uh, see the solutions of the lab assignments as well we will try to discuss actually, that yeah, actually, really. i am not from this programming background and i am trying trying all my all my level best to understand step by step yeah. and, uh, yeah. thing is that i got very less marks uh, i just wanted to know where i went wrong that's the reason yeah 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 we will let you know i will ask sir to discuss uh, regarding the lab assignment uh, in the next session okay 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 thank you ma'am okay is this session clear yeah yeah it was nice it was clear it was very helpful ma'am yes, thank ma you it was okay <laughs> okay thank you uh, so thank you i will stop the recording and thank you. you may leave now okay yes ma'am if we have two variable in jinga yeah and if Uh, and i don't give one variable any value then what will happen will it skip or it will print no if uh, uh, we have something called as a string right uh, string yes. in python okay so if i have That two variables happen. and if yes. i have given what i mean in string case uh, it will print that variable will throw error okay suppose i am using two variables in case of string and i am only giving data to only the single variable for second variable i am not giving data then in that case it will throw error but in case of jinja it will not throw error okay okay anything else no ma'am thank you ma'am okay